This is to you enjoying Christ. Um, I want to cover my face. <clears throat> um, the first two videos I made, and I think you have not even gotten the second one, I forgot who you were. It was around New Year's. I remember it was the winter when um, Ruth came to me and was in tears about you uh, because she'd come across you saying that you just renounced Roman Catholicism for um, a form of what's known as Protestantism which is still even though it's unbeknownst to the leaders it's still under the Pope under the church doctors, under um, man-made theology, and heavily more legalistic. So I uh, made a few videos. I think we uh, might have talked past each other, maybe not. Um, so I don't know if I'm talking to a welcoming or a accepting audience or one that's completely hostile. Um, I have not... F out of the history of Christianity, out of the history of the church, from the beginning of... from the day of Pentecost to the formation of the Western canon, which you call the New Testament, um, or I guess gets called the New Testament within Europe and the United States. Um, although there are some books that aren't included in other parts of the world and some parts that are added, but it doesn't change the basic theology of the teaching of the church. Because after all, both you and I know the church existed for hundreds of years before you had any form of Bible, and the Bible was put together by the church. In fact, every book, whether it's a book or epistle or apocalypse, was written by a member of the church, for the church, within the church, uh, to be read by the church, not by outsiders. That was the death penalty. Um, thing I worry about with legalists, um, I heard you actually mention in a video, and I'm assuming I'm talking to the Italian looking female with the Chicago accent, um, in this one, um, because that's the videos I see. If there's a male, um, I don't know if that's her brother, her son, her husband. I, I don't know. Again, it's... I don't care. It's not going to make any difference to me. Um, whether you believe in Trinity, are baptized, believe in Christ, put your faith in Christ, that will make a difference in our permanent relationship because I'll be spending eternity with anyone who does that. But the legalism of the West is beyond anything. The sacrificial atonement of Christ not found in Scripture. Um, the Well, no, let's take a step back transubstantiation, right? The explaining of how the bread and wine turn into the body and blood is a way of explaining something that was revealed to mankind and not explained. Could not actually be explained or would not be explained, but just wasn't explained. It's a mystery. It's, we call it a holy mystery. So, all of the church said do not expand on it. 
do not detract from it. Leave it as that. That is the body and blood of Christ. End of story. The Roman Catholics came up papal once with transubstantiation. In response to this, after Luther, Calvin's successor, Zwingli, came up with receptionism, which means it's just bread and wine unless you actually want it to be the body and blood of Christ, and then it is. So it's your imagination that's actually forcing it to be divine. Both of these were come to by silly man-made logic. Is it an emotional experience that brings me to Christ that makes me know that I'm part of Christ? Is it? Is it? Um, do I have a crisis and then change? Is it the fact that I'm getting better that proves I'm a Christian? We say, uh, can you recite this right here and say that you believe it? which affirms the Trinity and affirms the basic tenets of Christianity. If you can say yes to that, and you've been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, you're a Christian. You're part of the Bride of Christ. You're a son in the Son. How do I know I will resurrect in the last day? Have you taken the Eucharist? Now you're bound to Him. Explaining baptism in the Eucharist is the fault of the West, and always has been. Predestination, all this kind of stuff. That's why the West cannot escape legalism. The least legalistic church in the West, surprisingly or unfortunately, or however you want to put it, is the Papist Church, ruled by um, the so-called bishop, not true bishop, of Rome. That's the least legalistic. Or maybe the Lutherans. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a rat chasing its tail. That's why the concern comes in. Because um, the concern was throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Because there were certain things that um, Rome had maintained, had, had retained, but had just added too much crap to that the reformers just thought throughout, which were there from before the time that anyone ever called any bishop in Italy Pope. And that's where the fear came from. And then this, uh, these groups of evangelicals with this contemporary worship that don't know what the liturgy is, that don't know the fast days, that don't know any of this stuff, but will point at people and say, that person's smoking a cigarette. That means they're damned to hell, and they're not saved. Or, um, get this, baptism is an outward sign of an inward change. If you can find that within Scripture, I don't know, I'll give you anything I own. Because it's not there in Scripture, church preaches, teaches the exact opposite. Not to mention people who don't understand that the books of the Bible were compiled over a 400-year period and took a lot of blood to be poured into the soil. And many creeds and councils were held before those books could be put into the 27-book canon of the New Testament that is known in the West today. That's where the fear came from, of this woman's leaving this and she doesn't know why and, and this and that. Um, hopefully you're wise enough to still baptize your children um, and to respect the Eucharist enough uh, Paul even warns saying that if you take of it incorrectly you get sick or die um, again I would implore you since from what you say to me you're Christian uh you looking at me, uh, again, Westerners usually look at us with just hatred because we're neither Protestant nor Catholic and we predate both. 
Um, please pray for the Syrian Christians. Um, the Orthodox Church has had the highest rate of martyrdom for the last thousand years. Usually about a hundred of us a day die. Um, now it's up to 350 a day in Syria alone. Um, please pray for the Syrian Christians. And it's not just Orthodox there. There are Lutheran and Presbyterian and other factions that have gotten there. Um, peace to you. God and Christ bless you. Take it easy. Christ in our midst.